This is Duke University. Global trade and environmental Being justice. Struck Human rights China issues today. are still... The term Ubuntu. Of the Alien and Sedition Act. He's making inferential discoveries. The importance of an archive. The John Ho Franklin Center. Which you, 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 you may justify, uh, and I get to this point, legally by the right of any given state, like yourself in your own neighbor, in your own courtyard, to build a wall, is uh, something that is tricky with international law because there is no jurisprudence except the uh, Court of Justice uh, decision of 2005 regarding the Israeli-Palestinian wall. And that was a tricky one, which Elizabeth can talk a lot more about that because she's the lawyer here, that has, has been interpreted all kinds of ways. They did not establish legal proceedings by which we can arbitrate and decide if a wall that is built unilaterally by one party can actually have consequences for the other party that makes that other party really suffer or have uh, suffer from bad consequences and it affects environmental, political, economic, that that decision would imply. Hence, it is not at all the same as borders. So we have unilateral decisions. We have no real international framework, legal framework, to decide about how we go with this thing, phenomenon, worldwide. And of course, the third and most massive, I think, difference uh, between walls and usual borders is that those are really very concrete, very solid constructions. I mean, it's like a duck. You know you see a wall when you see it. It is not something which, for instance, from a Canadian point of view, well, you know sometimes you're crossing the border because you have a marker. And you're not supposed to have actually to cross the border. You're supposed to report after you cross the border to either a telephone, a person, or some way or form to say, whoops, I am in the United States. And after 9-11, it's better to report than not to. <laughs> But, 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 but very honestly, uh, and maybe we, we shouldn't tape this, but, and I, I told Steve's class, it's very easy to cross the border between Canada and U.S. It's, it's absolutely no problem. Uh, the problem is maybe afterwards. But the fact of crossing is, is, is very easy to do. Try to do this between U.S. and Mexico. That is the difference. It's borders come in different ways and shapes and means. For instance, markers. And yes, you have border patrols and you have... Um, buildings through which roads, railways, whatever, pass through that, you, that, that are significant border uh, symbols. But usually, I mean, the border is, is not delineated the way the walls are set up and are created. So the difference is that in this case, we have very direct, concrete um, constructions that then have all kinds of implications that we can, we can discuss for Palestinians and Israelis, not just one way, by the way, because we met Americans who were very shocked and angry by all of this for all tons of reasons, personal, economic, uh, political, cultural, environmental, like the flood picture that we saw there. Consequences of the walls are very interesting, and this is our next step, is that once we have that structure, it destructures and restructure in a sense, the borderland. Produced by Duke University. Online at duke.edu.